This might be a very interesting video. Um, I'm going to read over the uh, service animal and assistive devices policy that Uber has put together. Um, this can be found on their website. Um, it is country specific. I am in Canada. For those of you who can see, I hope my camera is uh, aimed correctly. If not, I'm going to read over this document with you guys. I'm going to touch on some key points. I'm going to break it down so we are all on the same page when it comes to um, the specific regulations that Uber have set out for their own drivers and the specific laws that they are governed by by the jurisdiction that they operate in. So I am again, I'm from Canada, I'm a guide dog user, totally blind. And I, I do rely on rideshare services sometimes, not as much lately because I am constantly discriminated against because I have a service dog. So let's get into this, break it down, um, and um, I will post a link to this document in the description of this video for anyone that wants to, uh, to view it for themselves. So, service animals. So again, I'm in Canada. The ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, is very similar to the Accessible Canada Act. There are a few differences, which I will touch upon. Uh, well, there is one specifically that I know of that I will touch upon when we get to it in the document. So, Canadian laws prohibit drivers using the Uber driver app from discriminating against riders with service animals, including by denying them service. So, Uber right there is claiming that they prohibit their drivers from discriminating against service dog users. For this reason, and because it's the right thing to do, Uber's policy also prohibits drivers who use the Uber driver app from denying service to a rider because of their service animal. So again, the, the Uber's well aware of what the, the rules and regulations and laws are. They just allow their drivers to continuously break them. That's pretty much what that means right there. <sighs> As explained in Uber's community guidelines, Drivers who engage in discriminatory conduct in or are in violation of their legal obligation. So Uber knows that drivers that break the law are breaking the law. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, drivers may lose their ability to use the Uber driver app. Uber will make this determination in its sole discretion following a review of the incident. Now, I'm going to talk about this after. Actually, screw it. I'll talk about it now. So anytime I have a an incident where I'm refused access, I contact Uber. You can do that within the app and you can outline your situation, what happened. Um, there's actually a specific, were you then I, uh, were you, I, I, I'm paraphrasing here, were you denied access because of your service animal? So you contact Uber, you fill out this, this form, uh, they, they'll send you this email that says, oh, something like, we are sorry to hear about this, uh, this should never happen, we're going to launch an investigation and we'll, we will reach out. So they often call me a couple of days after and I speak with somebody from their customer service team in California, that's where they're based I guess. Um, they will often tell me, well based on the information that you, you have provided, this driver uh, certainly meets the criteria to have their Uber license revoked. Um, and then I get this follow up email that concludes the investigation that says something like, we are so sorry, blah, blah, blah. We have refunded your trip, blah, blah, blah. And here's the part that gets me. We have reached out to the driver and reminded them of their, their obligation when transporting riders with service animals. So they're telling me one thing when they tell me that the driver meets the criteria to be banned from the app, yet they are actually doing the opposite thing. They are reaching out and reminding the driver of their obligation. What is a service animal? Well, we all know what a service animal is, so I'm not going to read this. I will say this. This is one of the differences between the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, and the Accessible Canada Act. In Canada, a 
An Uber driver can request you provide proof that your dog is a service animal, whether that be a, um, a, a service dog certificate from the school where you got your dog from or some form of government dog ID. <laughs> They can request proof that your dog is a service animal. In the US, they cannot even ask you to provide that. Um, another way for drivers to know that your dog is a service animal is if it appears that they are. If they have a harness on or if they are wearing a vest or if they are obviously assisting you in your mobility. Legal obligation of driver partners. Drivers have a legal obligation to provide service to riders with service animals. By virtue of their written service agreement with Uber, all drivers using the Uber driver app have agreed to comply with the law. So, again, <laughs> these drivers have agreed to abide by the law. Now, in my last incident, I was courteous enough to inform the driver ahead of time that I had a service animal, a guide dog, and he replied that I needed to order an Uber pet instead, and then he cancelled. So obviously this guy didn't get the memo, or again, he just doesn't care because Uber doesn't do anything to these bastards when they cancel on uh, service animal users. Right? If there's no punishment for these guys, then they're going to keep doing this. If a driver refuses to transfer a rider with a service animal because of the service animal, the driver is in violation of the law and is in breach of their agreement with Uber. Well, again, okay, we know this, but Uber does fuck all about it. There may be very rare circumstances because of a driver's membership in a group protected by human rights legislation. Um, where carrying a, a service animal would be an undue hardship. Uber will not permanently prevent the driver from using the Uber driver app if the driver has written evidence like a doctor's or a cleric's note letter dating before the incident and confirming that they belong to a group protected by human rights legislation and how carrying the service animal would be an undue hardship. Okay, I feel like if this was actually enforced like 90% of Uber drivers would suddenly have a dog allergy. <laughs> oh man. And then it goes into uh, how to report a service animal issue. Um, blah, blah, blah. Cleaning fees. Riders cannot be charged cleaning fees for shedding by their service animal. Now, this part of the document I'm I'm a little bit hazy on because I I bring a blanket for my dog. I generally try not to use Uber if it's raining outside and I need to go somewhere because it's just common courtesy. I wouldn't want a smelly, stinky dog in my car if it was raining. Um, I have been in a vehicle with a service dog user. I left my dog at home actually because I thought it would, it would be easier just to have one dog. Um, and we were charged a, an exorbitant cleaning fee because of dog hair. We fought it and got it uh, revoked. Um, so, and then it goes on to assistive devices. So. I've, I've, I've gone on some Uber driver forums just, just to look around and just to read about what the drivers are talking about when it comes to um, various issues that they deal with. And obviously the service dog issue is a big one. Um, I guess before you can become a driver, you need to check a box or something that says that you will comply with uh, law when it comes to providing service to riders with service animals. Now, a lot of drivers on these forums don't like doing this. They complain that it is infringing on their rights. Um, at the same time, what these guys don't realize is that by not transporting riders because of, because of their service animals, they are actually... Um, they're actually invading on the rights of other people, people that have a disability. Now, it's, 
it's ironic is what it is um, there was a lady back in 2016 I believe 2017 who actually sued uber because of service dog discrimination and she won her case um, uber's defense in that case was that their drivers are subcontractors they do not work for uber they're not uber employees so they basically tried to let their drivers hang out in the wind um, like I get it these drivers like they, they don't have a lot of support from uber when it comes to to benefits and shit like that um, at the same time um, these guys are perfectly able to look for work elsewhere they are not obligated to drive for uber you know it is easy to become an uber driver if you have all your ducks in a row so i get i get that um a lot of the the guys that i've had trouble with they don't speak very good english too so driving is a is a viable way to make money um however if you are driving under the uber logo if you are using the the uber product if you sign um and agree to the uber terms of service if you pay the company over half of what you make every month Luckily, the arbitrator in that lady's case saw right through Uber's sleazy cop-out and, uh, and ruled in uh, her favor. Um, so the thumbnail in this, in this video that I, I, I'm posting is a graphic of the latest Uber driver's contact details. This, is, this guy's name is Rajesh. He is a top Uber driver. Um, he's the guy that told me to order Uber Pet instead and cancelled. So, um, if you are a service dog user and have had inst instances of discrimination um, because of your service dog, I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below. Say hi or feel free to contact me. I will leave my Instagram in the description of this video. Check it out. Send me a DM. Let's connect. Again, I will also post a link to this uh, service dog, service animal policy in this description. So feel free to check that out as well. And have a great weekend. Cheers.